Hello. Greetings. Hello. Greetings. 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 For this nice weather outside. Oh, yeah. So I hereby call this meeting to order of the Community Relations Committee, the Board of Directors of NYC Hospital. I now call a motion to adopt the minutes of February 6, 2024 meeting. Con, Chair. Yes. yes. Dr. Katz. Yes. Dr. Mohong. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The minutes have been adopted. So first I want to start off, as all of you know or don't know, I'm Jackie Rowe Adams. And uh, I am proud to sit here today as your chair of community relations because community is so important to all of us. So with that, I want to say to all of you, please mark your calendars for the upcoming board of directors meeting. And then let me go back to the meetings. The minutes have been adopted, in case I didn't say that. <laughs> so please mark your calendars for the upcoming board of directors annual public meetings for fiscal year 2024. I encourage our CABS <laughs> members to attend and provide testimony. These meetings will begin at 6 p.m. on the following dates and location. For Queens, Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024, at Queens Hospital. For Manhattan, Tuesday, April 16th, 2024, at Bellevue Hospital. For Brooklyn, Tuesday, May 14th, 2024, at Kings County. For the Bronx, Tuesday, June 4th, 2024, at Lincoln. For Staten Island, Tuesday, June 18th, 2024, at Seaview Hospital. Speakers are asked to register in advance by calling Ms. Kalitha Herkley, Secretary to the Corporation, at, some of you have the numbers and some of you don't, so let me give it to you, 212-788-3359. You must schedule to present annual verbal reports this evening, uh, uh, the um, schedule to uh, present your annual reports. So let me say, this is very important. This gives the community, the public, opportunity to speak out, speak up and speak out. So that's very important. So at this time, this evening, we have the following caps. We have Bellevue, we have Gotham Health, Belvis, and we also have Gotham Health, Mari Senior, and we also have South Brooklyn Health. So, everybody know the five minute rule. Wonder who's gonna keep time. So we are gonna do this tonight. Last month we went a little over, but tonight, we going to keep it to 6 o'clock, right? Five minutes? Yeah. Because we know y'all have a lot of stuff. And I just want to congratulate all of you on the work that you're doing. It's so important, the work you're doing in the community. Congratulations to all of you. So now we're going to start with Bellevue. And let me make sure that I find... Bellevue Cab President, the Chair of Bellevue Cab. Oh, so we go. Ah, oh, okay. So let me let me say we're gonna start with Bellevue, but Seaview is not here, so we're gonna submit their report as a written report, which is which is included in the Community Relations Committee report document. Now I turn it over to our very own Dr. Katz for his remarks. But before he do his remarks, let me say, he did an omens hearing today. They drilled him. I thought I had to jump through the TV. Uh, <laughs> and, but I said, he got this. So let's just give him a hand. We thank you. We know that you feel that's your job, but it's your honor, but it was great. Some people, the things they were saying, people would have been scared. Oh, my God, they'd have froze up. 
but he was good. Keep up oh, the good you, work, and that's what keeps us going. It's an honor Dr. to Katz. it's an honor to be with all of you, and thank you for all the time that you devote to health and hospitals. It's a health and hospitals is an amazing organization. Uh, I want to just mention a few highlights since uh, the last meeting. Cumberland has a new state-of-the-art 3D uh, mammogram machine, which for the men in the room, mammogram can be very uncomfortable for women. Um, and the new 3D machine is not only more accurate, but it makes uh, the examination uh, much less uncomfortable. Uh, we opened up our lifestyle medicine program at Vanderbilt. We've had it at a variety of places. I highly recommend it. I don't think Health and Hospital has ever done anything that's gotten as much rave reviews um, as the lifestyle uh, uh, clinics, which focus on things like how well people sleep, uh, meditation, exercise, stress reduction, uh, what are the foods that you're eating, what are your own goals. Um, so it's both, you know, I think a great way to uh, deliver health, but it's also very patient-centered. It's not about what the doctor wants. They're, all the, the uh, meetings in Lifestyle Clinic begin with, what are your goals? It's not, it doesn't begin with, I uh, want to tell you that your hemoglobin A1C is 9.4, and I want to add medicines. It's, what, are, what is it that you want to achieve? Um, and that, that becomes what the effort's around. Uh, we are very proud to do free uh, tax prep um, for our International Mother Language Day. We translated um, our... Uh, New York City Care Program Outreach Flyer into 50 different languages. And in New York City Cares now uh, has 125,000 members. Uh, we have more than 1,100 people who've been served by our medical respite program. Uh, we have a new episode of The Remedy for those of you who enjoy uh, podcasts. We won nine awards for our palliative care. Um, our uh, Chief Women's Health, Ser uh, Health Service Officer uh, at Harlem and Lincoln were recognized uh, as uh, top black doctors. Uh, Andy Cohen, our general counsel, as uh, among the 24, 2024 notable general counsels. Um, and uh, Maura Senia um, was recognized with the prestigious USDA Gold Breastfeeding Award. And then uh, we wanted to announce launching our Artist in Residence program. That, Madam Chair, is my report. Thank you, Dr. Katz. We will now hear from the four facilities presenting their verbal annual report. Each presentation, each presentation is allotted five minutes, as you heard me say earlier. And we are grateful for the work that went into preparing them and we are grateful because I know it's, it's a lot of work. Thank you in advance for all our speakers for their time and commitment to the system. Now we will now start with Bellevue, Mr. Michael Snoots, Chair Cat. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, my name is Michael Smook. I'm Chair of the Bellevue Cab. I'm here with my fellow Cab Officer, uh, Deputy Chair uh, Karen Moore, and our partner in public affairs, uh, Sage Robinson. Uh, so, uh, I don't have the clicker, so if we're going to start the PowerPoint, uh, first page is, is it here? Yeah. Okay, uh, so this is Bellevue Community Advisory Board, Community Relations Report for March 5th. Let's go to the next slide. Equipment and infrastructure. Uh, 20, FY24 capital awards include upgrade in 3D breast tomosynthesis unit and advanced form of mammography, courtesy of Borough President Mark Levine and Council Members Powers and Rivera. New cross-linking uh, machine for the ophthalmology department secured with $50,000 from Council Member Justin Brannan. Uh, now uh, also opening of the serenity unit of our palliative care unit to offer supportive care to end-of-life patients or those needing expert pain management. On the attached slides photograph is a diagnostician examining a patient while using the cross-linking machine. Next slide, please. Uh, Bellevue Equipment and Infrastructure. Cogeneration system will help achieve 
greater campus resiliency and create a path towards energy efficiency and environmental sustainability by enabling the hospital to maintain its mission critical functions, even when the electric grid is not available and emergency generators fail. A FEMA funded uh, flood wall, part of the East Side Coastal Resiliency Project, will provide 500 year flood protection around Bellevue's perimeter. On the attached slides photograph, it's a picture of a model of what the cogeneration system looks like. Next slide, please. Bellevue patient safety and satisfaction. We celebrated the conclusion of our tri triannual week-long survey from the Joint Commission, our first since COVID-19 <coughs> pandemic began. Throughout the week, uh, TJC surveyors commented on the great work they saw at Bellevue. Improving the environment of care is a quality and safety priority. Tools used to measure performance include surveys and after summaries in the patient's preferred language. On this slide, we see a photograph. Uh, on the attached slide, it's uh, Bellevue employees are uh, congratulating each other and themselves on the <laughs> TJC success. Next slide, please. Bellevue frequent complaints by patients. In 2023, Bellevue earned a silver certification in patient-centered care by Plantree International. Certification was awarded following a rigorous application process and a site visit by representatives from Plaintree International, focus groups of patients, families, and staff, and a review of quality care measures and patient outcomes. We made data-driven improvements in a variety of areas, including quali uh, clinical quality and patient experience, poor communication, lost property, and long wait times at our pharmacy are the most frequent complaints. We are working with Press Ganey to improve response time to both negative and positive reviews. On the attached slide is a visual of a plain tree certification of excellence in person-centered care. Next slide, please. Bellevue issues impacting the community. The primary health concerns of the communities we serve include obesity, diabetes, and hypertension. Access to care concerns include the impending closure of Mount Sinai Bellevue Beth Israel campus. Mm. Okay. Bellevue is the oldest public hospital in the nation, despite being challenged by space and an aging infrastructure. We hold true to our mission and values by providing excellence in healthcare to all New Yorkers, regardless of their ability to pay, and continuing to address healthcare inequalities and inequities. On the attached slide is a photograph of a sketch of what the original Bellevue Hospital building looked like in 1736. Acknowledgements, Bellevue's acknowledgements. Thank you to NYC H and H Corporation Board and Karen Dixon and the Council of Cabs. Very special thanks to William Hicks, CEO, Marcia Peters, COO, Dr. Andrew Wallach, Gladys Lowe, Evelyn Hernandez, and the entire Bellevue Hospital Leadership Cabinet for their dedication to health equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility. On the attached slide is a photograph of an image symbolizing the Bellevue Community Advisory Board, which succinctly outlines our main priorities of advocate, represent, inform, and advise. Thank you so much. That was four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any questions, um, Mr. Chair? No question, six, seven, Dr. Four. Katz. Michael did a great job. Uh, one statistic, Michael, about Bellevue that I think is important for the public to understand is that the current census of Bellevue is 200 patients higher than prior to COVID. Uh, and that is a tremendous sign. It's a, it's a sign of the success of Bellevue. It's a sign of the success of the entire health and hospitals because we've been using Bellevue as the referral center for our hospitals that don't have the full range of services. So all our hospitals are more crowded than, than they were, but Bellevue in particular, 200 people more that's in beds every day. I mean, and the hospital is still functioning well. So the, I think that's an amazing achievement. Thank you for sharing, Dr. Kess. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Mahoney? Nothing, thank you. Okay. 
So I have a question, but you sort of answered it. Um, sure. But let me go. Do you have anything to add about the impact that Mount Sinai closure is having on your facility? I don't. I don't know. But I, all I could tell you is when I, whenever I come to Bellevue, I'm struck by NYU Langone, and I think that Bellevue aligns with social justice, and NYU Langone aligns with more or less the free market capitalist system. So if you want to understand America, just look at these two facilities, and it's jaw dropping. And uh, these are the things that uh, motivate me. That and reading books on the history of Bellevue, like the David Oshinsky book. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm struck by some of these things. And also, I'm struck coming here is here we are. This is an organization that channels social justice, and we're in the middle of Wall Street, which is market <laughs> justice. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm certainly uh, aware of these, con these contrasts. Well, in, in the need to defend this office, we, we moved here, Michael, believe it or not, to save money, and it worked. Uh, it was empty real estate, um, and it, the price was low, and we were able to eliminate the van. So we used to be in multiple different places, and then we had to run a van. So it's, it's eco-friendly, because we no longer have to run the van. We were able to save the money from the van, and we got a great deal on the, the real estate. But I had the same, having worked in only decrepit government buildings before this, in all the places I worked, I'm like, I'm not a lawyer. Why is there so much wood around here? <laughs> Um, but it's but it's all a good a good dollar amount. Um, to your question, Jackie, we do think that some of the increase in the census at Bellevue has been the diminishment of Beth Israel. That they used to the hospital has a a uh, operating license census of over three hundred, but the uh, of late they've had about a hundred patients there. We think there has already been some movement of patients. Um, that, that's affected Bellevue, and certainly it will continue if the hospital does close as uh, they've requested that they, to the state in July. Thank you so much, Doctor, and thank you again for that wonderful report. Thank you. So now we will have Claudia Williams. Claudia Williams is the Vice Chair of Mauricenia. Actually, no. Also, oh, hi. I'm Claudia Williams. Um, I'm actually the Gotham Regional Director of the Bronx. I'm actually sitting in on behalf of the cab chair for Belvis. She was unable to make it, so I figured I would give her a report, if that's okay. Okay. Thank okay. you for coming. Okay, thank You're you. Welcome. Okay, so this is uh, Gotham Health's Belvis uh, Community Relations Report. Excuse me if I'm reading directly from it, as I'm just... No, no. As okay. long as you do your five minutes and we understand. <laughs> I, 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 will, I will do you proud, ma'am. I'll do you proud. Okay, so uh, for 20... Uh, 2023 accomplishments. More senior has, uh, excuse me, Belvis Ooh. has had, I know, I have both centers. <laughs> Belvis has had a very long list of accomplishments. I will not read through every one of them, but to just highlight a few. Uh, 2023 Patient Center of Medical Care NCQA accreditation. The 2023 American Heart Association Medical Association, the Gold Recognition in Diabetes Care. Um, amongst Gotham itself, it um, is actually one of the best in show as being one of the top performing centers that Gotham actually has as well. Next slide, please. For our um, FY24 Capital Awards, uh, we received $1.5 million for a dental suite upgrade from speaker Diana Ayala. Um, also another $1.4 million for an eye and vision expansion as well um, from the same speaker. Um, and then also $400,000 for new imaging equipment um, as well. And then we had um, also got a new women's health um, uh, mammography machine um, in Belfast as well. We've actually started um, purchases on actually all of the equipment. The women's health e imaging equipment is actually already in and being utilized. Um, vision is actually due to come in very shortly and we are reallocating some space to make room for the new dental equipment that is currently coming in. Next slide. Well, here, this is another um, update. So we also have a new DEXA machine that was recently um, installed and is currently operational and, and being used. We have two new elevators that were recently installed as well. Um, we've made massive um, updates to our meeting areas so we can do better with uh, audio and visual, especially during our um, cab meetings and things of that nature. It makes it easier for people to see things. And we're finalizing our wellness room, which has been a big project that a lot of the Gotham sites have picked up on that we're looking forward to getting ready for our um, 
our staff so that they can utilize and have like a good safe space for them as well to kind of decompress as, while they're doing all the hard work that they usually do. Next slide. Uh, so new infrastructure requests for FY25 consideration, we've requested the following items. Um, excuse me, were submitted actually to our borough president and our New York City Council. So uh, the eye care expansions, we need to do infrastructure to um, accommodate the new requests that we received prior for the actual equipment. So that was what it is. Um, our bathrooms are not all ADA compliant, so we're asking for additional funding to make sure that everyone in the building is meeting that measure. And then we're also looking to do massive lobby renovations as uh, Belvis is a very older building. So we just would like for it to be a lot more welcoming to our patients as they're coming through the door. Next slide. Patient engagement and satisfaction. Uh, we do massive, massive um, events on a monthly basis at uh, Belvis. They host uh, bi-monthly hypertension and diabetes fairs, so that's where they have patients come in. Um, they do Zumba in chairs. They teach them how to eat properly. Um, they have the, optom the optometrists and ophthalmologists come in and speak to them to make sure that they're addressing their eye cares, um, especially if they're diabetic. We have an annual resource for it where we shut down the block and we invite our patients and we invite vendors and things of that nature and everyone comes. It's a really nice party that happens and then we're also, of course, engaging with our patients, making sure that they're aware of all the community resources that are out there and available to them. Uh, we do promoted screenings, awareness and education events throughout the year, um, example, HIV and cancer. We've launched an on-site smoking cessation service and we also do provide teen clinic tours and education partnering with neighborhood schools to kind of engage those uh, engage their children and get them into care as well. Next slide. Uh, issues impacting the communities that we serve, um, access to addressing community mental health. So that is a, a really large concern of ours. Um, all of our patients are screened for depression at the time of visit utilizing our EPIC screening tools. Um, the goal is really to just make sure that we are partnering our patients with the necessary care, so we're passing them off to the behavioral health team, social workers, things of that nature, making sure that they're, um, you know, being taken care of holistically. Um, access to healthier food options. I'm not sure if many of you know, but the Bronx is a bit of a food desert at times. Um, healthy options is not readily available to um, all of our um, people who live in the Bronx. Um, a lot of times it's the unhealthier options that are readily available, so we work with a lot of partnering entities like Bronx Works to do the food pantries and during the summers they have, uh, they come and do the, um, the sidewalk, I'm spacing out what the word is, farmer's markets, they come and they set up in front around the, um, the center to allow for uh, different options for our patients. Access to other social services, we, co we collaborate with a lot of nonprofits to just improve um, access to other things like housing, other social services for children, autism referrals, things of that nature, just to ensure that if it's not something that we offer, that we're able to partner with the group to be able to uh, ensure access to the patients. And then also, uh, we need a, we have a massive need for frequent um, NYPD patrol. We're in a not so, you know, there's a lot of crime going on in our surrounding areas, and we've partnered with our local police district just to make sure that they're conducting monthly walk, you know, walk around just to make sure that they're securing the perimeters and making sure that our neighborhood and our patients are feeling extra safe um, in conjunction with our hospital police and things of that nature as well. Next slide. And just our final acknowledgments. Um, we would like to extend the gratitude uh, on behalf of the Belvis clinical team, operational team, Gotham's um, executive team for their tireless commitment to serving the healthcare needs of our neighborhood in the Bronx as well as our strategic partners who help to amplify and impact our work, just to name a few, our Bronx Borough President, um, Vanessa Gibson, New York Senator, Mr. Serrano, Assemblyman, Dr., uh, excuse me, uh, Amanda Satimo, New York Councilman Ayola, and U.S. Congress uh, Richie Torres. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia. Very good. Uh, did, did, I, did, I, did I keep it in? <laughs> you did it, girl. You did okay. It. <laughs> Any questions, Mr. Chair? No questions, thank you. Dr. Katz? No questions. Doctor? No. No. And I have no questions. Just keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now we have Morris Senior. Yeah. And, um, to speak to us today is our vice chair, and that's Ms. Leslie Harrison. Okay, so thank you so much. So, um, thank you, Madam Chair. Excuse me, Madam Chairperson Jackie Adams. Um, 
President Dr. Katz and the board members, um, once again, my name is Leslie Harrison. I'm the vice chair. I'm also here with our chair, Mr. LeBoy. Mm -hmm. So I'll be presenting. I'll start with the 2023 accomplishments. Um, we've achieved our uh, fis for fiscal year 2023 budget a surplus of $20.5 million. A certification for excellence in, per in person-centered care, bronze level. 20 to 20, excuse me, 2023 Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Million Hearts, Hypertension Champion. Um, I'm going to skip some. Um, I will say 2023, we were also, we received the American Heart Association Gold Recognition for Diabetes um, Care. 2023 American Heart Association for Gold Plus Recognition for Hypertension Control. We're number one in the system for chronic disease outcomes. And we celebrated Morrisania's 50th year anniversary with the Black Party guest speakers, included Dr. Katz and Dr. Long. We had over 50 vendors and CBOs. Next slide, please. So for 2023, the awards were $30,000 from Gotham Health for having the best clinical performance, $30,000 from Gotham Health for having the best financial performance, $225,000 for asthma pediatric suite from Bronx um, Borough President Vanessa L. Gibson, $100,000 for new imaging equipment, also from the Borough President um, Vanessa Gibson, $500,000 for eye and vision expansion from Bronx from the borough president also, and 1.2, over 1.2 million for community resource center from city council member Athea Stevens. Um, next slide. Um, equipment and infrastructure update. We have a new 3D map mammography system, a new dual energy x-ray absorbed <laughs> Okay, you got me here. Oh, Dexter. <laughs> it's a Dexter <laughs> machine, so I slowed myself up. Um, two new elevators installed, community mural painted and installed in the main entrance. Marisania lobby was repainted and rejuvenated. Updating the women's and men's lockers, so we're in progress with that. Implementing a wellness room on the first floor, we're also in progress with that. Next slide. So um, equipment and infrastructure request for fiscal year 25 consideration, the following capital funding priorities were submitted in January 2024 to the Bronx Borough President and New York City Council, fixing chronic roof leaks and updating blood pressure and vital sign, vital sign machines. For patient engagement, next slide, I'm sorry. For patient engagement and satisfaction, um, we hosted a Santa Day <laughs> on um, December 15, 2023, hosted two Music for Soul events at Marisania. We launched the Salud Mia fitness um, activity sessions, creation of community resource center. We did the facility-wide renovation completed at Gun Hill, created and implemented the infection control rounding tool, launched the health literacy assessment tool in medicine, and also launched the care partner program in medicine. Next slide. So our issues impacting the communities we serve are access to healthier food options. We've created uh, community partnerships to promote nutrition and healthier li lifestyles with Corbin Hill Farm Fresh program. It's a food share program. Also New York Common Pantry. Access to immigration support and legal services um, with NY LAG, which is New York Legal Assistance Group, service appointments, also working with Bronx Defenders. Access to other social services. We are working with Bronx nonprofits, including Bronx Works, Bridge Builders, and Mid Bronx Senior, Senior Citizens Council to promote better access to housing support services, substance abuse counseling, and employment services like training and job coaching. Next slide. A compliment. A comp. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Acknowledgements. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. We would like to extend <laughs> our gratitude to Mara Senior's clinical and operational leadership for their tireless commitment to serving the, the health care needs of our neighborhoods in the Bronx, as well as our strategic partners who help to amplify the, the impact of our work, just to name a few. Um, Bronx Borough President, um, the Honorable Vanessa Gibson, the New York City Council member, the Honorable o 
Althea Stevens, New York State Senator, um, the Honorable Jose Serrano, New York State Assembly person, um, uh, the Honorable Amanda Septimo, also the U the United States Congress member, the Honorable Richie Torres. Thank you. Oh. And thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. You, you did it. I think you did three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> With mistakes too? <laughs> oh, join the club. Join the club. You know, uh, it's no good. It's not good if you don't make mistakes. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. Madam thank Chairman, you. I want to add, uh, here we have additional ladies doing a standing job in oh. our community. That's why I asked her to come over here and present her. Because I was telling Dr. Cassie, you know, it's time that we, the old guard, uh, relinquish our uh, leadership to our new generation. Uh, she did an outstanding job and congratulations. Uh, let me be uh, sure that we, uh, Morisani, we work entirely. Not because we are poor neighborhood. The poor and the whole entire nation, uh, our citizens do not deserve the best services. She's doing an outstanding job. The, uh, the community advisory board is doing a job. Uh, the leadership with the, uh, to, uh, Pudo is doing a great job. Everybody is doing it our best. Um, you remember at the beginning we have a surplus of twenty million five hundred thousand. That's an excellent accomplishment by Mauritania. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Miss Leslie Harrison, for the great job. And you thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I that old men still have a role. <laughs> So, uh, this, uh, Terry agrees, right? So we still have a little bit of juice left in us as, as old guys. Uh, Mr. Chair, do you have any questions I, or comments? No questions, just excellent work. Dr. Thank Katz, Thank do you have any questions or comments? Dr. I, I, I have to practice. Marthon. Beautiful name. Dr. Marthon, you have any questions no, or comments? Hearing none, I just want to say thank you for that detailed report. Great. Thank you so much. I have no questions. So now we have South South Bronx Health. I'm sorry, is it so oh see see the mistakes I'm making? <laughs> the Bronx. Every time I hear somebody they talk about the Bronx. So uh, they, they don't. we can handle the Bronx. Sure. It's a main line. <laughs> yes. So now we have South Brooklyn South Brooklyn Health. Ms. Rosanna, Ms. Rosanne D. J. Nero? Right. All right. I got it right. Um, please. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Katz and the Community Relations Committee for inviting South Brooklyn Health to report tonight. With me tonight is our Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Brady, two members of our CAB, Constance Thomas and Jennifer Dublin, and our liaison, Lakeisha Weston. I am happy to report that South Brooklyn Health the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Hospital is doing fantastic. Under the leadership of our CEO, Svetlana Libiskaya, Dr. Terrence Brady, our CMO, and Majinda Kaur, our Chief Nursing Officer, we have progressed further than we could ever have imagined. We had a great year. The highlight, of course, was the opening of our RBG building. The building itself is amazing, and it is staffed with amazing personnel. This can be verified by the numerous awards that we have received. One from the American Heart Association, we received the Gold Plus Award for Stroke, and the Silver Award for NSEMI. Our Emerging Department nurses received the Lantern Award from Emergency Nurses Association. We were one of the three hospitals in New York City to receive this national award. South Brooklyn Health also received the Gold Level National Safe, Safe Sleep Certificate from Cribs for Kids. Our surgical ICU nurses received the Silver Beacon Award from American Nurses Credentialing Center, Pathway to Excellence. Uh, we have also received the Gold Plus Award for BP Control from the American Heart Association and the American Medical Association. Um, in August of 2022, we were given a Da Vinci robot. Since that time, 
we have report we have performed 875 robotic surgeries mm -hmm. which i think is something and because of that we now have a second one mm -hmm. so i can imagine Very how many good. you're going to be That's able to great. accomplish mm -hmm. in the next year thank you now i'm going to start with the infrastructure and equipment the construction of the new rbg building rbg building was completed and opened in may access to the new front entrance and completion of the flood wall on Ocean Parkway will be completed in, in the fall of 2024. That building just doesn't want to come down, I think, the hammer building, but it will. Uh, the design of the new first floor ambulatory care space has been completed and construction will begin in summer of 2024. The Women's Health Initiative Project, consolidating the services on one floor construction will begin in the summer of 2024. A new CT for outpatient radiology we will also receive. And they're also going to be remodeling, which isn't on the slide, but uh, the remodeling and modernization of our hematology oncology uh, infusion center, which is also the construction to begin soon. And that's like near and dear to my heart, and I'm thrilled because you know that people going through um, chemotherapy, it's, it's, it's a hard time for them. And if they can have a bright new place to go to, it helps a, an awful lot. And that combined with the wonderful doctors and, and nurses that we have there, we're going to be doing great. Mm -hmm. so that's, the implement, that's the infrastructure. Okay, now I'm going to do the patient safety and satisfaction. The executive leadership is committed to improving the culture of safety among staff. Patient safety in collaboration with wellness, HR, patient experience will work with the lowest performing units in, in leadership, teamwork, culture of safety, and develop an improvement plan for each department. In 2023, the patient safety department successfully implemented the BioVigil hand hygiene program. That's an electronic hand hygiene adherence monitoring system ensure hand hygiene compliance in every patient encounter. In 2024, we intend to improve compliance with this system and monitor the direct impact of the system on acquired infections. Excuse me? Hospital acquired infections. Hospital acquired infections. Hospital acquired infections. Um, a pilot project began in 2023 to identify and address the patient safety indicators, which impacts patient care and leapfrog scores. We are expanding this project in 2024 to involve other disciplines. This multidisciplinary approach we anticipate will help improve our leapfrog safety grade in 2025. Mm -hmm. Now we come to our frequent complaints. Okay, so we got one minute. Oh, I have a little more. Please let me finish. <laughs> I'll try to go as fast as I can. Okay. Uh, because I really want to get to... Skip to it. I'd like to get to the issues impacting the community because that to okay. me is very important. Unless you let me read the rest of it. Okay. We have one minute. Okay. Here. The continuing crime in our streets is really impacting the lives of our of our families, mm -hmm. whether it be on our streets or in the subways, everybody has it. But that is one, uh, that's an issue. That, mm -hmm. And also the need for Brooklyn Health to become a level one trauma center. Dr. Katz, I know what you're going to tell me. It's not sustainable. I think we have to sort of like look over it again. We have all those buildings going up. And it's tremendous buildings. And it's horrible. And I want somebody that has somebody in an ambulance on a Friday at 3 o'clock to try to get from Cropsey Avenue to our nearest level one trauma center. The community begs you to look at it again and see what we can do and see how we could get the, the monies, whether we're going to have to get to our elected officials. But, I mean, we're going to have to do it. And the community will do whatever they can to get this accomplished. because we, And it's going to take, I know it's going to take years, but it, we really would like it. To be looked at again, and somehow got to wrap it up. Got to okay. wrap it up. And another thing, <laughs> the last thing <laughs> is uh, uh, the Ida G Israel Clinic that's in the western part of Coney Island. It originally was a clinic on Neptune Avenue, 
Superstorm Sandy took care of that. So we moved it temporarily. And now we're going to move it to a, per a permanent spot, which is great. The only thing is, they don't have the pediatric clinic anymore. And that was an important part of that clinic. People were able to take their their babies and their children, put them in a stroller, and walk over there, and it could be taken care of. So if we can look into that, we'd appreciate that also. And now I'd just like to thank everybody. Of course, you know, I'd like to take, thank Dr. Katz and Health and Hospital. Oh. And I'd also like to thank Mayor Adams, the Brooklyn Borough President, Tony Renuso, all of our dedicated federal, state, and city officials, the FDNY and the NYPD, and we hope that we'll have continued support. Thank and you. Thank you so much. Great report. Mr. Chia? Uh, no questions, thanks. Dr. Katz? We'll look, we'll look at the numbers. A, a lot of is this the requirements of the Trauma Commission on the number of cases, and that, yeah, that's see. often the thing. But it, I agree that part of uh, Brooklyn is growing, and it's getting more and more dense, and if it may want, be we'll that take a ride, would... and I can show you these buildings that are all of a sudden <laughs> popping up. No, I know one of my patients has got a beautiful building. Um, look with a beautiful view of the ocean, really, yeah, it, really it, it, astounding. It's... Um, so I, I understand, uh, and certainly I understand very well the dynamics of the Belt Parkway. Um, <laughs> I know. And, you know, how, how long it takes to get anywhere if you need to develop Parkway or you need Flappers Avenue or Ocean Parkway. It's, it, is, it is sort of gridlock. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dr. Marthorne? Nothing. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Okay. And thank you, everyone, for wonderful reports uh, this evening. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. And we did good. It's not even six o'clock. Yeah. We did really good. I think that helped with that. So I have no questions. So again, thank you and please be safe. Get get home safe. Any old business? Any new business? Hearing none. I'll, I now call a motion to adjourn this meeting. And thank you again, all of you for your uh, beautiful, beautiful support and reports. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This meeting is no longer being